friends, this is Meg at Chasing Retro. Finally, at last, the teddy bear journals are complete. It's going to be a late night posting of a video, but they are finally done. I made four and I ended up keeping one for myself. I was back and forth. I mean, I agonized over it. I don't need any more junk journals. I've kept several, but there is just something about a teddy bear. So. I put one back for myself. It's actually the one that I was the least happy with because I made some mistakes on it. I had bubbles in the paper and the cover. I have had the fabric a little too tight and it buckled. So I'm keeping that one for myself because I really do not mind one that has some uh, irregularities. So I'm going to be listing three of these journals, three of the four, in my shop tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Saturday, July, July, <laughs> wishful thinking. Saturday, January 6th, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, but definitely, um, hopefully everyone will have time to watch this video flip through. And if you're interested, you can go ahead and decide which one is your favorite and be looking for it. As usual, as with many of my journals, I named each of these, and so I will put the names in the description box below. They are all made out of an Amazon recycled paper bubble mailer, the, the cardboard looking ones, and they measure nine inches tall, six inches wide. It is one signature, <clears throat> but it's a hefty one. It has 20 folded pages, so that's 40 pages, and that technically mean, means 80 back and fronts. It's sewn in with a two signature, <laughs> sorry, two whole pamphlet stitch, and a lot of times when I do those Amazon mailers, a little bit of that stuffing inside the envelope comes through with the needle. That's all that is, and I don't try to cut it off because I don't want to hurt the fabric. So to me, that just reminds me of a little teddy bear and some of his stuffing is peeking out. So I left it. I put buttons on the ends of the strings in the center of each signature, and I tried to match the buttons to the cover. Uh, these are, I think, yes, all three of them are covered with a vintage fabric. Two of them are calico and one is a little bit of a different look. You'll see what I mean in a moment. This is a beautiful uh, periwinkle slash cornflower blue calico, and then I have some embossed cardstock here. This is a Mary Inglebright picture or image from a magazine, and I've backed it onto chipboard and glued it down with some lace underneath. These are little bits of vintage lace. Um, I found this at uh, Recraft not long ago, and I love it. I've been using it on everything, and this is a a little heart doily that I found at an estate sale, and then I stitched a little button to the top because, you know, teddy bears a lot of times have button eyes. On each of these, there is a raw silk, or sorry silk, uh, tie that is sewn into the journal, so it's not removable. And I will go ahead and show you this one. Oh, the name of this one is Frederick. Now, I know this is a little girl, but the bear to me, most teddy bears to me are, they just seem like boys. So these all three have a boy name. So this is Frederick. Um, this has a sewn in lace pocket that goes back and front, you know, on both sides. And I have another sheet of embossed cardstock. This is the white core cardstock. So it looks really cool when you emboss it. And then a lot of these fussy cut images are from my stash of children's books. Um, I was sent many things in Happy Mail from several different people. So thank you to everyone who sent me Happy Mail. I mean, it is just teddy bear stuff just started coming in and I showed a lot of it to you guys. Um, I have a few images in here from the teddy bear kit from Mrs. Cox. Um, and then a lot of these things in here are um, public domain images. Not a lot. I really didn't use many printables. Um, most of what is in these journals is authentic ephemera that I took out of books, magazines, and other sources. 
which is what makes these a little more special than um, some of my previous journals. This is a actual vintage phot photograph that I found at Recraft, and it has someone's name on it, christening photo, and then a little child drew something down here, maybe him, and he has a big, beautiful teddy bear. So, and this is an image from a book, and I don't know if you saw my Instagram post, but my daughter has some Prismacolor color pencils, and I just, almost all of these book images are black and white, and I just slightly colored the teddy bears brown, and I love the way it looks. It looks like those uh, tint, hand-tinted photographs um, and portraits from the 40s and 50s. And there is a lot of sewing in this, these books, and there is a lot of lace and calico and things that are homey and cozy and make you feel like you're about to go night-night. <laughs> okay, this is a piece of upholstery sample, and I just cut out a teddy bear face, and I sewed buttons on. This is a velvet nose, and then I sewed a mouth, and this is some vintage lace too. This is from a book. It is a picture of the cover of another book, and I've turned it into a journaling card. And this is from a children's dictionary. The overall color theme of these is blue and brown, but as you can see, there are other colors tossed in, be it mauve or coral or yellow or green, and a lot of tan as well. This is just a note sheet and I stamped a teddy bear on it. I used a punch to make the belly band. Sorry y'all, my hands are tired because I've been working on these since about 12.30 today. <laughs> They're just worn out. This is from a DK publishing book about teddy bear, counting teddy bears. And I did not want to cut the pages so I just folded them in. I got this in Happy Mail. This is an iron on transfer of a teddy bear. And then I put a quote here. A teddy bear is your childhood wrapped up in faded yellow fur. And as such, he commands affection long after he's outgrown. This is a children's book page. You see the little guy down here. Um, this, this is some vintage crocheted lace. And then this is one of the flocked teddy bears. And my husband put some uh, screw eyes in the top and I've just attached with a bulb pin. He is rather heavy and floppy, so it's fine if you take him off and attach him to the tie or some other place. This is an image from Highlights Magazine. I got this in Happy Mail. I didn't cover the back. I just thought maybe you might want to color it and glue it somewhere. And this is from, I believe, a story called Ira Sleeps Over. I think that's it. It's just, I remember reading this when I was a kid in the 80s. Uh, this is a piece of, it's actually scrapbook paper, but it's like a thin chipboard. And then I did a pocket, a pocket made into a tuck spot. I stamped the words very cute on this little flash card. And this is a piece of vintage gift wrap from the 80s and I've just put it on a card. This is a children's book from, it's actually my son's era. So 2002, 2004. Um, there was a toy called TJ Berry Tales. I think they were trying to recreate Teddy Ruxman. It didn't work out so well. My son actually didn't like the bear at all, so he didn't keep him, but this is from one of his books. I thought it's, I think it's really cute because they did this elaborate setup with these bears. I just printed this cute little guy on a piece of um, craft paper. A little uh, cluster here that I've sewn. This is, I got this in Happy Mail. It's an adorable story about the teddy bear who didn't want to go to bed. This is from another book. I got this in Happy Mail last week. You might have seen the haul. Adorable. And the colors are just stunning. I made a tuck spot with this guy polishing his boots. And then we have a little image here on some Tim Holtz wallpaper. This is from a very old Dick and Jane reader. I think it's the teacher's guide, actually. Here is that 80s gift wrap by itself. And then I put a little teddy bear, um, you know, border right there. This is from a We Sing songbook. I stamped a teddy bear here and glued him down. 
This is from another children's book. I fussy cut that. And this is a vintage Hallmark cross stitch calendar. This is a party invitation. I found these at a thrift store um, in Columbia when I was visiting there recently. And a little cluster here with a teddy bear and some fabric. Another adorable teddy bear story. And then this, um, that looks like a tuck spot, but it's not. I just wanted to provide a place for journaling. And that's, of course, Winnie the Pooh. And we have, this is one of the Mrs. Cog's images. And this is, of course, Family Circus. This is from a cross-stitch book right here that I found a while back at the thrift store. I was excited to finally use those. This is some uh, paper that I got in Happy Mail that I, I can never dye anything like this, so I'm excited that I was able to use it in this journal because it's gorgeous. A little journaling card. A little, little tiny, uh, I guess you would call that a calling card or a gift enclosure. And then this is a vintage Mrs. Grossman's teddy bear sticker. Unused, so you can put him where you would like to. This is an adorable image. It says, you cuddle good. This is an adorable little uh, teddy bear address book page that I also received in Happy Mail. Thank you for this. And this is from a, not old, but it is from a sewing pattern counter catalog that I found at Hobby Lobby. And I just put that on some paper. The center here is a double pocket like I love to do. And I just made this really interesting I just had this idea. It looks like a TV um, and then another book image and I put a little fabric tab. Uh, so my husband's really good at origami. And so I contracted him to make these. You can do like this, like I had him, or you can also put him at the top of a page like that, like a bookmark. But I think he's more sturdy, like I had him. And then this is just a piece of stenciled paper for journaling. I do not stencil very often, so it's a big deal that there's stenciled paper paper in this book. I don't know why I don't, I just don't. Here is a little tiny journaling card. And then we have a piece of graph paper and another book image. You can write on the back. I sewed some calico here. Another fussy cut image side pocket with a little journaling card and a little ticket that I put a teddy bear on. Uh, just two more journaling cards. Here's a little tiny fabric flip with, of course, Paddington on here. I got this in Happy Mail as well a long time ago. Finally using it. She's adorable. I don't know who she is, but I found her in a book. And then Mrs. Cog's, I believe, Mrs. Cog's image and uh, just a little fussy cut on the tag. And then a little cluster here on this fabric pocket. This is some a satin teddy bear embossed trim and I, I glued it down to this and then this is from a vintage children's book. Another cluster. This is a flip up journaling spot and then some embossed paper and this cute little Christmas tag. I know it's past Christmas but he was a teddy bear and I just had to put him in here. A bedroom without a teddy bear is like a face without a smile. And then a belly band made with that beautiful lace. And I've just made a very large vintage index card into a journaling card with some tea dyed muslin ruffle. That fits like a glove, doesn't it? Um, this is a Rolodex card that I've stamped with a Care Bear stamp that I got in Happy Mail. A little ticket and... My daughter actually made these for me. Is that not adorable?
little paper dolls, I guess is what you call them, paper chain. And last but not least, a flash card and a tag. So again, this one is named Frederick. They all have the same number of pages. I don't know if I, I did. I told you the pages. They all have the same number of pages as far as I remember. And they all have the same dimensions. This beauty is named Theodore. Um, I know it's pinkish, but he just, this is, um, this is actually uh, from Dick and Jane. So this is the little, uh, is it Tim? Timothy? the bear but I wanted to name him Theodore and this is also on chipboard and this is a vintage doily and then down here we have a pink and blue vintage button oh my goodness I received this in happy mail is that not the cutest thing you've ever ever seen oh and then um this is from that book again about the history of the teddy bear and I've just put it on some cardstock this is some vintage mauve very 80s mauve lace and it didn't have a very pretty trim so I took some taupe grogain ribbon and used a decorative stitch and then made a little frame for the bottom and here is another one of the little upholstery teddy bears that I made he is super fluffy and then we have a Mrs. Cobbs image and just a little piece of paper with another cutout uh, another belly band with some gingham ribbon and another sheet. This is some more crocheted ribbon and another teddy bear charm. I put rickrack on this edge. This is a 80s, vintage 80s gift sack that I've sort of cut up to make into like a gift wrap page. And this is some 80s uh, fabric ribbon that I've sewn down with a feather stitch. A flip up journaling spot. I used my new embosser to write teddy bear. And then we have another sewing counter catalog image and graph paper. Little envelope here with a little tiny blue heart. And it's a tuck spot as well. And there's some stencil paper in there for you. Stamped a little guy right there. Mrs. Cog's image, and this is from that teddy bear book. I think it's like a, a child's homemade poster about a teddy bear repair shop. And then this is some paper that I dyed. My roasting pan has these bumps on it, so it created that effect. This is a very vintage, very, not very vintage, <laughs> Not very vintage card, but it's got those aging spots. I don't know what you call that, um, but I love it. It just looks old. And then I did a fabric flip here. This is from Daisy Kingdom. Do y'all remember that from the 80s? It's a Daisy Kingdom print. And then a little playing card, bingo card. I'm not sure what it is. And another journaling card fabric cluster, Dick and Jane image. There's little Tim again in the little green car, 80s wrapping paper and more of that satin embossed trim, cross stitch page, fabric ruffle, side pocket with a little teddy bear journaling card and I did a play on words and said, bear with me. <laughs> This is little Jack Horner, but he has his teddy bear with him in this version. A little um, diagonal tuck spot here with some Tim Holtz wallpaper. I put a little image from a book on top and then some embossed cardstock. Another origami bear. This one is duo toned. And then a tag and a very large journaling card. I'm not going to pull it out, but it has just brown on the back for journaling space. And then this cute little guy. And then an ad from a book about the um, 
I don't know what this is. Maybe it's a song book that came out about poo. And then a flashcard. This is some decoupage. I got this in Happy Mail last week. You might have seen it. They're like decoupage images that you can cut out and put on a, you know, a little wooden stool or a shelf. Very 80s slash 90s. And I thought she was cute. She was blowing bubbles. Vintage trim here. And then we have another book cover and a little ticket. Well, we don't want to make Paddington mad. Let's move this up a little bit. This is a very old Paddington image um, from before he was redone. <laughs> and then some rose-colored crocheted lace. Here's a quote. A teddy bear teaches us that if the heart is true, it doesn't matter much if an ear drops off. <laughs> Put some punch trim here, washi tape here. Here's a little address book page and a Mrs. Cog's image. Another one of the images from that children's book and then a Care Bears Rolodex card. This little guy, I don't know why he's in the corner, but it's sweet and sad at the same time. So put that on that page. And then this cute little girl carrying her teddy bear up the stairs. Another fold out bear, accordion bear. <laughs> um, these are just two little tiny pockets that I made. Little tag, calling card, and a Mrs. Grossman sticker again. Uh, this is a a sticker turned into a die cut journaling card. And then this is an unused book plate. Some, some more of the 80s fabric ribbon and a little cluster down here. I think this is also Tim. He made an appearance a lot in this book. I did not mean for that, but that's very cohesive. Here's a fabric pocket with a cluster. And then here's Tim again. Man, it was meant to be. And this was actually the lining of a Christmas card that we received this year from one of my cousins. And I saw it and I said, that is going in the teddy bear journals. So, and then this is an adorable little praying girl on a tag. I just clipped this large index card here with the ruffle. And this is, um, oh, what is this type of fabric called? They used to make vests out of it. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know what the word is, but I just fussy cut him out and thought maybe you would want to place him somewhere. And this is another book image of a live action teddy bear scene. He's a carpenter. And then another one of the little cards that I made. Oops. Stay put, guy. All right, this one again is Theodore. And then last but not least is the one that's a wee bit different, but I made it this way. I made it the colors that it is because I wanted to use this quilting piece on top. So I found this guy in an antique store. Just, it was an unfinished quilt square and he was actually on a piece of red gingham. It matched his cheeks and I loved it, but I, the square was so big. I couldn't figure out how to fit on a journal. So I ended up just cutting around him and then sewing to hold all of his interfacing together. And then I created the same red gingham for him to sit on. This one's name is Patches for obvious reasons. He is a patchwork teddy bear. I have actually gone and sewn buttons for his eyes because they're so much cuter than the little tiny ones that were on there. And then this one has a red and blue button. And unlike the others, this one has a red, sorry, silk tie. The inside is from some fab, it was a kit to make dolls that I got at Recraft and it was just so groovy. And it, it was perfect for this journal. It just looks so 70s. Though it has vegetables on it, it's still very homespun looking. It even has the pattern printed on it for the dolls, but I thought that was just cool. And then I have a lace pocket 
I got this in Happy Mail somewhere along the way. And here's a little greeting card. Cute little guy on the back too. And then a flash card and another one of these. I don't know what I'm gonna call these, but I think I'm gonna make a lot more of these. I love the way they look. I could call them television cards because that's what they remind me of. The television sets back in the 50s when it had that wide rim. This is another one of the fuzzy teddies and he is white and he has black button eyes and the same velvet nose. This is from a cross stitch pattern. I got this in Happy Mail. A little tag with this guy on here. I don't know who he is. He may be a famous character in, in the UK because the book was from the UK. Is this Rupert, guys? I don't know, y'all tell me. And then this adorable little uh, live action picture here. Belly band with the page, just like the other three, other two. Uh, this one has a flip up with this adorable fabric I found at Recraft and then this Paddington fabric that I received in Happy Mail. Uh, this fun little jaunty colorful cluster. This is from a book about a teddy, teddy bear's picnic. I've sewn plain blue on the back. White eyelet and here's this teddy. He's a little bit lighter than the others. Uh, a little side tuck here. Mix, Mrs. Cog image, he's supposed to be like this. And we all know who this is. This is um, Shirley Temple in Captain January. I read recently that this teddy bear sold like 10 years ago for a couple of million dollars. Is that not insane? So that teddy bear is still out there. The one that she was holding in the movie. A little tuck spot with, there's Tim again. He is just everywhere. And the calling card and this little adorable forlorn looking bear. Sleeping, sleeping child with a sailor suit bear. And then we have a panda teddy bear, the only one to appear in these journals. <laughs> and a teddy bear picnic girl or boy with looks like a jello mold. Ruffle here. This is from a Jack, not Jack and Jill, um, Humpty Dumpty magazine. Is that right? It's a magazine from the 70s for children. And cross stitch page. This has some of the samples on this one showing what they look like complete. This is from We Sing. A coffee dyed paper that's been crunched. Sweet little Paddington here. I colored him with colored pencils. I hope I got his hat color right. I know his coat is blue because I had a bathrobe that looked just like it. It even had those buttons and he had a little Paddington patch right here. I loved that bathrobe. I wore it until it was like only coming down to my waist. <laughs> this is an accordion bear. And then this is the a little ad for Paddington from a book. And here is another Mrs. Grossman, another little bear with a B, and this is some sort of an ad in that book about the history of the teddy bear. This is some scrapbook paper from probably 2001 or 2002. Y'all, it's one of the oldest sheets that I have in my stash, <laughs> but it had vintage teddy bears on it. So I cut it into, I cut it into two six by six strips and used half in one journal and half in another. I think the other one is the one I kept. Look at this adorable image and then this little card. So to get the images bright like this, I have an Epson Eco Tank. I need to do a video on this because I did trial and error for like two hours. You use Canon matte photo paper. You print with auto select, which means plain paper setting, but instead of normal quality, you select best quality. And that's what makes it look like that. 
that will get you the truest blues and the truest reds. Those are the hardest two colors to make look, not printed. But yes, I've decided it was worth a splurge on this book to use my matte photo paper. This is another origami bear. <laughs> I keep bending their necks back. I don't mean to. Um, and then this is a image from a magazine, uh, Teddy Bear Picnic, like topiary display, which I thought was interesting. A piece of graph paper, and this is from 1984, a Hallmark sheet of, I don't know if these are the reusable kind. Y'all, I probably shouldn't be doing this. I think they're just regular stickers. Uh, they were like teddy bear paper doll stickers. I don't know if they are still very sticky. Like I said, they're from 84, but I had to include this in this journal for you to play with and, or just keep as an ephemera piece. And then these little bears are cute. I did a little collage behind them. Here's one of those decoupage bears pulling a wagon. Another black and white image that I tinted. Look at that little guy. I love it when their little fur is scraped off. That's the cutest. I would pick him if I had to pick among these four. I made a very large shaped die cut journaling card. Those are fun to make. Vintage calico sewn here. Teddy bear stamp. Uh, this is just, I think I found this at Graphics Fairy. I forgot to mention that website. Is that not cute? A teddy getting a teddy. This little guy, okay, I cut him out and I cannot remember to save my life which direction he was supposed to be going. Like, is he sitting weird or is he like on his back? But I decided he looked cute like he was trying to crawl like a real bear. So that's why he's like that. <laughs> I had so much fun with these. I'm serious. I turned into a kid again. And then stenciling. Is that not so fun? I'm going to do that more. And then this is from a... Uh, oh, man. What's the name of that catalog? New England... Um. I want everything in this catalog. They have like vintage nightgowns and vintage Christmas ornaments. I can't remember what it's called. If y'all know what it's called, let me know. But they had Stife Bears. And then this little guy with the top. He was from a book. Um, another tag that I glued a teddy on. I used another play on words, positively adorable, and then Paddington again. And this, I forgot to mention, this is a vintage baby card. Not super old, it's probably from the early 2000s. Um, this is a fabric pocket. I did the same pocket on the last page of all the journals. And then this little guy, Rupert maybe, I don't know. This was an interesting picture I found of a mother sewing up a bear. I don't know what the dad's doing back there. He's like, he's got some kind of drink in his hand, but <laughs> the mom is making everything all right by sewing it up for the little boy. And look at this. So cute. Happy Mail again. So as you can see, I tried to put a little bit more red in this one because of the red outside. And then, I'm not going to take this out, but this is the index card, the Care Bears Rolodex, and a smile ticket. And then, some embossed paper, the address book page, and I got this in Happy Mail as well. It's like one of those teacher resources for a calendar. So, this one is Patches. And Theodore. And Frederick. These will be in my shop tomorrow morning at 10. Y'all, thanks for sticking through this one. This was long. Um, I debated whether or not I should put those last two to music, but I was like, no, every one of them has their own flair. So I decided to talk through the whole video. So thanks for sticking with me. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, relaxing, awesome weekend. 
See you soon.